All right, so this workshop today is going to focus on uh, geometry, uh, mainly finding perimeters, circumference, area, um, volume, things of that nature. The first few pages of the worksheet, like the back of the first page, uh, has formulas for your perimeters and area, rectangles, squares, trapezoids, parallelograms, all those good shapes. There's no come above. Circles. Um, and then we move to the next page, which has your formulas for volume. If you're in 305, the formulas for volume will be provided to you on test. They're a little bit more complicated, so don't worry about memorizing those. But you do have to memorize the formulas on the previous page, the perimeter, the area, the circumference. Those are the things that you have to know if you're in 305. Uh, if we move to the next page, there's some definitions, like what perimeter is. Perimeter is basically uh, the distance. It's a distance around the shape. So the perimeter of the square is the distance around the square. Uh, the perimeter of a rectangle is the distance around the edges of the rectangle. Um, circumference is a fancy word for perimeter. Circumference is the perimeter of a circle. So when we think of circumference, it's the same thing as perimeter. It's just specifically used for circles. Okay. Uh, area is a two-dimensional um, calculation, it's like your length times your width. Um, the area of a square, you know, is area is pi r squared. So there is two dimensions involved in the area. And for volume, there's three dimensional. There's three dimensions. So that like when you're using uh, your formulas for volume, your units will be like meters cubed or centimeters cubed. That's what you have to put that three there. It's the three dimensional dimensional space. Okay. So let's actually work with some formulas, uh, some shapes. On um, top of the page, just say 1D, standing for one dimensional. And we're talking about perimeter and circumference. So let's make sure everybody's on that page. We have some shapes there. And we can go back and look at our formulas if we need to. So let's try this one first. I'll copy it as exact as I can. Now, we don't have a specific formula for this kind of shape, but if we think about what perimeter means, perimeter is the distance around the edges. How can I find the perimeter of that shape? Add them up. Add them up, add them up right? The perimeter here would just be 5, plus 4, plus 2, plus 7, plus 1. I just want to, you know, around the edges and add them up. So what's that going to give me? 19. When we're talking about uh, geometry, you want to put some kind of unit. If there are no units attached, you just say 19 units. We don't have a square because it's just one dimensional. It's a perimeter, it's a distance. And it's not volume, so we don't have to put three on there. We just want to leave it as that. We have another shape here we're a little bit more familiar with. What kind of shape is this? Triangle. 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 34, 16, 30. So once again, using that definition of perimeter, how could I find the perimeter of that shape? And what would that give me? And what units am I using here? Inches. So I have to put once again, perimeter is one dimensional, it's just a distance, so we don't have to square that or anything like that, we just leave it as it is. Okay. Any questions on those? Okay, if I go ahead and erase that. So the perimeter applies to each of the shape um, that's not a circle? Yes, perimeter, perimeter is, if you use the basic definition, it's just the distance around the edges of the figure. Some shapes have a specific formula we can use, but in the end, it just breaks down to adding up all the sides. So like we have this rectangle here. Okay. 
Now, there's a specific formula for the, for the perimeter of a rectangle, right? If we go look back on our sheet, it's um, basically two times the length plus two times the width. So, what is our length here? Eight. Use eight. And what's our width? Three. And two times eight is? Sixteen. And two times three is? Six. And if we add those together? Twenty-two. We're talking about a distance here, so 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's think about what we were talking about, our definition. What would this side over here be? Three. Three. And this would be eight, eight right? Opposite sides of the rectangle. If I added those sides all together, what would I get? The same thing. Right. One, three plus eight is? 11. Eleven. Plus three? Fourteen. If I add to eight? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. I get the same answer. It's just the distance added. But some of the shapes have a specific formula we can use to get there quicker. Right? Or a little bit simpler. Rather than adding up a whole bunch of numbers. So, let's talk about a different shape. What kind of shape is that? A circle the best I can draw it. It's a good circle. Sorry. A little bit better in the paper. Now, our formula for circumference, which remember, circumference just means perimeter of a circle. What's our formula for circumference of a circle? Well, you can look back on the formula sheet. That's, right. That's for area. 2 pi r. 2 pi r. That's one way of doing it. Pi times, what would the D stand for? Oh, um, yeah. Pi times the diameter. Okay. My suggestion is use the formula with whatever information you're given. So are, am I given the radius of the circle or the diameter? Diameter. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and use this one. Uh, pi, uh, usually they define <coughs> it's either 3.14 or 22 over 7. Uh, we're just going to use 3.14 here. So 3.14 times the diameter. What's the diameter of that circle? Eight. 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 And we would multiply eight times 3.14. Anybody gotten that one yet? Thanks, John. Five point one two. Check it, please. Yeah. Now, if you're in an 0305, remember you can't just calculate. Oh, but you're not in 0305. And once again, my units weren't defined yet, so I'm just going to use 25.12 units. Now, the circumference, just like the perimeter, it's just the distance around the circle. So, once again, just think of circumference as perimeter to specifically for circles. Any questions on those two? That's it. That's just it. That's easier. That's it. Am I supposed to make it harder? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're just taught to use the radius and whatever that stuff you, you can. I mean, you can use no, the radius would be 4, but 2 times 4 is 12, 8. I, I just suggest using the formula with the information that you're given. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a lot. I mean, if you are given the radius, use this one. But if you're given the diameter, use that one. Because two times the radius is a diameter. Is a diameter. So it works out both ways. Right, any other questions on that one? Go to.
just using a perimeter scope. Right? We're just asked to find the perimeter. There's a lot of information on this one. But perimeter of a shape, remember, is just the distance around. So is there some kind of extraneous information that we don't need to worry about here? The height. The height, right? That line here measuring the height, is that part of the distance around the figure? No, so we don't need to worry about that. If we're talking about the area, yeah, we would have to take that out of account. We'll get to that later. So the perimeter of this shape, we're talking about just finding the distance around the edges. Once again, what would I do? And it goes to 16 plus 6 plus 12 plus 20, just the distances on the outside. What does that add up to? 54. And I did have units involved here. What were those? Centimeters. Centimeters. So I got to make sure I catch that. So my perimeter is 54 centimeters. Well, what about a square? Looks like I'm giving only, well, that's a horrible square. All right. So if I'm given one side of a square, it looks much more like a square in your paper. Um, it looks like I might have a little bit, not enough information. But what do we know about a square? All sides are all sides. All sides are the same. So would you agree that? All of those would be three. Yeah, yes. Now we could just add those all up, and what would I get? Twelve. Twelve, that's true. But if we wanted to use a simpler formula, the perimeter of a square is just four times the side. So if you had some really large numbers you didn't feel like adding up, you could just say four times three, which is what? Twelve. Okay. So we could use that formula for perimeter to get it. Or add them up, two points. And we get 12 units. Any questions on those? Because then we got to deal with a couple fun ones for the next two. shape here, but it's not like a, a normal shape that we usually use, right? It's not a, a full rectangle or a full square or anything like that. So we have to use the fact that perimeter is the distance around the edges, so I just add up my edges. But I have missing pieces. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out what this side is, and I also need to figure out what this side is. Is there any way I can do that? Yeah. I have the numbers on that side. What would this length here have to be? Seven. How would I know it has to be seven? If you look on the opposite side, notice the distance from here to here is four, and the distance from here to here is three. So my total distance would have to be seven. seven. What about this missing edge here? How do I know it's four? Okay, got the little cutout right there. Right two out. That whole distance is six. But I know this distance here is two, so the difference of those two numbers has to be my remaining distance. Okay. So now I have all my sides labeled, and I can just add them together. The perimeter is seven, six, four. Adding all those pieces together, what do I get? Uh, 10, 26. And I do have units labeled here. 26. So 
I'm going to do a little work to figure out what some of the remaining sides are, but it's not like that. Let me have this one. I want to find the distance around the edges here. I only have certain things labeled. Now, I know what this length is. What would that be? Close to. The problem is that half circle there. Well, what's the perimeter of a circle called? The circumference. Circumference. And I have half of the circle there. <clears throat> Do I have the diameter of that circle? Yes. 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 So let's think about this. I have half a circle. And I know that it's circumference. I was given diameter here. Pi times diameter. So for a full circle, it's pi times diameter. For half a circle, it's what? Pi times yeah. diameter divided by 2. Exactly. So for half a circle, circumference is going to be pi times diameter divided by 2. Could it just be pi times radius? Exactly. Nice. The diameter divided by 2 is what? Radius. The radius. Right. That is half of the diameter. So for half a circle, your circumference is pi times the radius. Okay. So let's use that. We said pi was 3.14. And we're multiplying it times the radius here. What's half of 6? 3. 3. And 3.14 times 3? 9.42. Thank you. So that is the distance around this edge here, 9.42. We're still using the same units. So now, how would I find the perimeter of this figure once I have all the distances labeled? Now, I don't know. So my perimeter is 6 plus 12 plus 9.42 plus this distance here. Why didn't I add this 6 here? So it's not a distance on the outside, right? That's just the, that's the diameter of that, that circle or the width of the rectangle. So let's add those together. 39.42. And I have units here that I have to deal with. Centimeters. Once again, it's not squared, it's not cubed, because we're just dealing with a distance, one, one dimensional. Okay. So that kind of gives you some practice on some uh, perimeters, circumference, uh, and how to attack certain figures. So let's move to two dimensional figures or two-dimensional measurements, which are going to be your areas. Can I erase this information? I have to, or the square. 
the area is two-dimensional, make sure you have that square on your units of measurement. Not too bad. Now, why, where does that one half come from? Now, why is it just base times height? Because it's 180 degrees in a triangle, and there's 360 in a uh, square. So you'd use them half of a square. That's one way to think about it. I was thinking about it another way. <laughs> All right, so let's think about what kind of shape is this? It's a rectangle, right? And our, what's our formula for area of a rectangle? Length times width, or your base times your height, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if I split it in two? What shape do I have? Triangle. I have a triangle. So that's where the one half is coming from. So if you're, you know, if you can remember that the triangle is a half of a rectangle, you can always remember where that to, to include that one half in there. So what's our base here? Twenty. Right? That's the base. Triangle. We're multiplying that times our height. Six. And we're just going to take that and divide it by two. Let's do the multiplication first. Twenty times six is one. Twenty. Divided by two. So you One twenty is sixty. Do we have units involved here? Yes. <coughs> Feet squared. Right? Two dimensional area. Any questions on those two? Area is always squared. Hmm? Area is always squared. Area is always squared. Perimeter, circumference, just the units. And we have the volume. That's going to be to the third. That's always going to apply. This one's kind of weird. Refer back to your formula sheet for it. What's the formula for area of the capsule? A plus B times H. A plus B over two times I. Okay. 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 A couple different ways to write it, but let's think about it that way. A plus B divided by two. What does the A and B represent? The top and the bottom. Oh, right. Those are your two bases. What is the H of height? Your height. So what two pieces of information in here can we just completely disregard because we're talking about area? The size. The slant size. So we don't even need to worry about these. Cross them out so we don't accidentally put them in somewhere where we don't need to. So A plus B. That's going to be these two. It doesn't matter which one you use for A and which one you matter you use for B. No, it doesn't. So you wanted to call this one A and this one B. That's fine. So 6 plus 20 divided by 2. And then we'll take that and multiply it times what? 10. 10, our height. So what is 20, or what's 6 plus 20? 26 divided by 2. 19. 
One thirty. So thirteen times two ten. Like we said, one thirty. One thirty. Seven meters squared. Seven meters squared. Why am I squaring it? It's its area. It's area. It's two dimensional. Correct. We have to memorize the formula for travels away. Yes. So make sure that's one of the that's one of the harder ones to remember. Um, so we have this other shape here. Specific or the, the square is a very specific rectangle. And, you know, it's just length times width, three times three. Mm -hmm. So what's three squared? Nine. Okay. I can leave it like that, right? No, no units squared. Square. No mm -hmm. unit squared. All right. <coughs> yep, I gotta have those those units. Okay. Square's not so bad. Maybe this one is. Length and what is its width? Six and four. 
Does everybody agree that the length here is six and the width is four? I only heard a couple of you guys. Just make sure everybody's there. All right. And then six times four is four. Centimeter squared. Centimeter squared, correct? When we put our answer in our final form, we'll put that there. What's the area of this rectangle down here? What are its dimensions? What are its length and width? Three by two, three by four. Yeah. All right, we have a length of four, the width of three. So what's four times three? So I got an area of 24 here and an area of 12 here. So how can I find my total area of the figure? And the area is 24 plus 12 plus 24 plus 12, 36. And my units, so this is four centimeters squared. So even if we don't have a formula for the shape that's given, we can sometimes break it up into shapes we're more familiar with, and then use those formulas to calculate the area. Okay, any questions on that one? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Single curve. That's good. If it's easy, it's good. Any questions on those? Six times seven. Well, I would have said seven, but and you why would I um, just do that thirty-six? And would you have had it take the top and the bottom? Well, there there is another way to do that. You could notice that there is a rectangle missing here. Oh, okay. right, right. Six times seven is forty-two, and this would be a two by three, right? Right. What's two by three? Six. six. And if I take six away from forty-two, I get thirty-six. Thirty-six. That's another. There's other ways of doing it. Yeah. But a lot of times it's easier to break apart when the shapes and add them together. Sometimes it's easier to pull figure out. So this shape here, what's that? Circle. Circle. What's the formula for area of a circle? Pi R squared. Pi R squared. We have to use the radius here. We can't use the diagonal. It's always a radius. Well, what's the radius of this circle? Radius is mm -hmm. nine divided by two. Oh. She's going to do it Pi R is 3.14 times our radius squared. So what do I do first? Can I multiply before I do my exponent? Mm -hmm. No. No, I got to do the exponent first. So 3.14 times 16. Then I'm going to take 3.14 times 16. 50.24. 50.24. Thank you very much. We're still talking about area here, so what do I have to put after that 50.24? What squared? Yeah, I don't have anything like centimeters or anything like that. I'm going to put unit square. Once again, that is a formula for area, so it is another one that you have to memorize. Are we good on those two?
So let's go, we had this problem for the perimeter as well. And remember we had to kind of piece it together with parts of the rectangle and a half circle. I kind of had to do the same thing with the area. What kind of shapes are involved here? Half a circle and a half a circle. Rectangle and half a circle. So let's put that. I got it. You have semicircle or half circle? Do the same thing. So I need the area of the rectangle and the area of a half circle. Right? This is essentially what I'm looking at. Correct? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the area of the rectangle? What formula do I need to use there? Plus, for the area, what's the area of the circle again? Pi r squared over 2. Well, the area of the circle is pi r squared, right? And I need half of it, right? So I need to divide that by 2. So our area is going to involve all this information. Well, what's the length times the width here? 12 times 6. 12 times 6. Pi, once again, is 3.14. My radius would be what? Be careful. Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Remember, once again, this has to be six centimeters, so half of that would be three. Let me just square that and divide by two. Twelve times six. Seventy-two. Three squared. Nine. I can't add that seventy-two to that until I can finish off what's over there. Three point one four times nine. Point two six. Twenty-eight point two six. So let's put this over here. 28.26 divided by 2, someone said was 14.13. And if I add 72 plus 14.13, then you see it's better than
36 times 6 is? 36. 36. And we got to do 36 times 6 once more. 216. 216. Okay. And we're dealing with volume now. So what would I have to use as far as the measurement here? Units cubed. Units. We're talking about three-dimensional figures now, volume. So we have to be to the third power. getting to if you if you've had a chance to multiply it? I did. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure.
Yeah, it's good. I want to see if I can draw it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 